Hey everyone, welcome to another Tuesday News Day. I'm your host, Rem Alternus. I'm the Community and Marketing Director for Catalyst Game Labs. I've brought a special guest with me today that is John Helfers, uh, Executive Editor. That hey everyone, editor welcome to another Game Tuesday Labs. News Hold Day. On. I'm my your voice. host, Rem Alternus. I'm the Are we good? Sorry, my, my speakers started playing the, the, the thing back to me. Say that oh. again. <laughs> Uh, yes, executive editor is correct. Uh, folks, please excuse my voice. I have been talking almost nonstop for the past week and a half, but I am John Helfers. I am the executive editor for Catalyst Game Labs. I am in charge of producing fiction in the Battletech, Shadowrun, Leviathans, and other IPs we work on either now or in the future. And it's a pleasure to be here, Rem. As you had let me know, I am the first, technically, the first back to back guest, so I am honored. <laughs> and, uh, it's great. It's great to be here. Yeah, I, I, I am glad you are honored for that. After uh, with the announcement of Runefire, I had to reschedule your your appearance, so I didn't want to forget about that. So the first chance I got, I was like, John, come back. Um, yes. Well, Runefire was a big deal, and still is a big deal, and we are really excited about that. Coming. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm excited. <laughs> so this one is going to be a little different uh, than I, I think. I I feel like. I've been saying that for several weeks now because uh, of the travel schedule, but I was not at Adepticon. So in terms of any of the news that has been publicized and stuff like that, I have not gotten to watch all the live streams yet. Um, so we're going to kind of just do a retrospective of Adepticon with John for the first part of this. And then we're going to go into uh, some of the fiction releases and news and audio and all of that stuff for the year in terms of what's planned. Um, but before we kick off, John and I have a dear friend named Jennifer Brozek, and uh, she is also one of the authors for both Battletech and Shadowrun fiction. Um, can you can you name some of the works she's done? I, I have the Shadowrun ones and one of the Battletech ones, but... Well, her, her biggest one in Battletech was the Rogue Academy trilogy, which is consists of Iron Dawn, Ghost Hour, and Crimson Knight. It is a terrific, it's actually one of our, she's one of our you Battletech YA authors, and she uh, Jen knocks it out of the park every time. Um, I am so pleased to have her, and then currently she's working on her Mosaic Run. We just did Mosaic Run auditions, uh, released in, I think it was February, and the novel, the draft has been completed. She's polishing that up, is going to go into edit, and that hopefully will be out by Gen Con. It is my plan that that is going to happen. So yeah, she's my, one of my awesome, what I call my hybrid authors, those who write in more than one IP, and she does a wonderful job, whether it's Shadowrun or Battletech. Okay, wow. cool. I'm, I'm, I'm getting, uh, while while we're talking here, that you're coming through a little bit quiet. So I turned you oh. up and I turned me down. But uh, if, if yeah, you've got the mic right in front of you, I see. So, um, so just making sure. Yep, I've mm-hmm. done what I can. I've done what I can. I can turn me down more, but I can't turn John up more. So, okay. Well, I can. There is that I can get closer to the mic too. Is that better? Probably. Okay. Um, but in the meantime, speaking of Jennifer Brozek, the reason we brought her up is just this morning she has launched her first ever Kickstarter. Um, it's yes. called Dear Pen Pal. I've got a couple of graphics I'm going to bring up on screen here. Uh, Dear Pen Pal, Belgium, 1980, and the pre- the premise of this is that you are actually going to get snail mail. Uh, there's 24 letters that will get physically mailed to you, so you have something to look forward to in the mail, you know, just like olden times. And um, with that, what what uh, you are going to get is a pen pal letter from 10-year-old Jennifer, uh, who's living in Belgium in a ha- haunted house. So some of the stories <laughs> that she has are true, some are fictionalized, uh, but it's great for uh, young readers as well. Um, I mean, I'm just excited to get more of... Jen's work showing up at my door. So uh, the link, I'm going to drop it in chat here. Um, Let me actually, actually, just type it because it's a fast one. Um, That is bit.ly, bit.ly. Oh, God, it got really small. Come back. Let me turn forward. Ha, ha, ha. Um, I'll, I'll type it while we go. But John. While I uh, am busy promoting Jen, <laughs> what is uh, tell us tell us how Adepticon went? Uh, Adepticon went wonderfully. I could not have been 
a better start, at least to my convention season. Um, met a ton of fans, met influencers and uh, podcasters, which we'll go into a little bit later. We streamed at least, I think, six to eight hours a day, a mix of games and panels. Had some new information, had just some fun interviews. One of the big things there that we never have before was Michael Stackpole. Back pole, he's going to kill me for butchering his name. You'd think I'd know after a decade or more. Michael Stackpole was a special guest at the con, and he was couldn't be more gracious with signing books. We did an hour-long interview with him. It was awesome. Uh, Brian Young, Michael Sierra Bella. We had actually a ton of authors. Phil Lee, Jason Hansen. It was it was uh, Rusty Zimmerman came up all the way from Texas. We had a ton of authors. Uh, we sold. We had uh, we sold a ton of games. Uh, fiction did very well. I take pride in that. Um, and it was a very busy time because of where we are. It's always packed. But Adepticon 2024 was a great way to kick off the convention season for me. And uh, I look forward to more of them, but but that one always holds a special place in my heart because it's close, Chicago, and it's just so much fun. The the excitement at Adepticon, I really urge people, if there's any way you can make it, go, because it's not a very large convention. I think they may have topped 8,000 people attending. Mm. So, but it feels like a bigger one than it really is. And everyone is excited. Yeah. Everyone's excited to be there. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I got to show up during teardown and see see the leftovers and there was so little merch left. Um we, <laughs> yeah. we, it, it was a phenomenal show. It remains uh one of our best shows of the year now. So uh we will as long as that keeps happening, we will always live stream from it. We will always uh have a huge presence right in that hallway for as long as they, they let us. And um yeah, there's just there's so much good to say about the show. Um, Lauren got to make an appearance, which is great. It was his first, uh, appearance since, uh, January. And mm -hmm. so he's, uh, he was, I remember he said even that he was going to fly in on Friday and fly out late Saturday. And he ended up staying the entire weekend because he just enjoyed it so much. So yep. it was good to see him mingling with folks. Um, mm -hmm. that was great too. Yes. We of course did the, this was the 40th anniversary. We had to have cake and we did cake. Yes. Uh, the, the ill cake as I, as it was coined on the internet from the, Capellan Confectionery, which was just Jeff's kiss. That was so funny. Um, and it was great. It was, you know, and that was actually, we did, we first do demos. This year we tried something different and we had a painting, taken paint with two things, a taken paint, which was always booked at the entire con, and we had a painting contest. And I, Bram, I don't know if you have pictures. You'll have to put those up later. The pictures, what people put together, what they painted was amazing. I'm always in awe of painters because I have no painting skill whatsoever. And just the color schemes, the patterns, just the imagination was wonderful to see. It was amazing. It was a big success. We look, and I'm a shout out to Amy Tiravella, who pretty much ran it with uh, with her assistant, Sam, whose unfortunately last name I forget. I'm sorry, Sam. Uh, but they were both awesome. And we look forward to replicating that and making it bigger and better next year. Awesome. Yeah, if if you were at uh, the painting event, please take pictures and send them in through our Discord because um, we do the uh, we also do the community mm. paint schemes and stuff like that that post one day a week. So we'd love to promote the work that you did. My favorite, I got, had a, a someone on Discord reached out and sent me a picture their daughter had uh, like ten year old daughter had painted. Uh, in the contest, and she wanted to to send it to the pink hair la lady. So uh, oh, it was very that's, cute. That is so sweet. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that one's my favorite so far. <laughs> okay. My highlight was we actually had Mike Stackpole and Brian Young sit in and paint. I think it was on Saturday or Sunday. Oh, cool. So we got shots and video, which I need to get to you. Um, so that was please. Just it was amazing. That's everything awesome. about Adepticon is amazing. I keep saying that, but that's because it's true. So. Uh, we also had Big Red Forty Tech there. Yes, as a yes, special guest. Mm -hmm. uh, so that and, uh, that was exciting. It was talking with him. Um, I'm not sure there's a bigger fan of BattleTech around. There probably is, but I don't know if there's those. First of all, Big Red puts out great videos, so obviously you should go check those out. And I've heard I might have to check out his live streams. I've heard it's a literal cavalcade of buffoonery. This, his words, not mine. This is how he says it. And uh, hanging out with him was great. Um, he's a fount of really deep battle information and puns and jokes. And just, he's an amazing person to hang out with. So it was just awesome to see it. At first time meeting him, I, I've seen his videos because he reviews some of our fiction and um, never met him before. And it was just delightful. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Big Red. I, I see you in, in chat. So uh, 
Thank you for your energy and enthusiasm and being there for the fans. Uh, it was really great to to have you there. So um, I, I can't wait to see how Adepticon can grow in the future with special guests and appearances and stuff like that. So um, check it out next year if you get a chance to. And absolutely. So it's truly worth going to. Yeah. Um, cool. So we talked about, um, kind of that, that Adepticon and I'm sure we'll, we'll have more ideas that pop into our head of like, oh, this happened too. Um, like I heard there, actually, I'm going to do one of those right now. This happened too. <laughs> I heard there was an epic betrayal of Brent. Oh my God. Yes. So I, okay. And I'm calling this the great Brent betrayal. Absolutely. And of course, because it involves Big Red, it's even better. Now, I unfortunately did not get a chance to witness this. I heard about it secondhand. It was, let's see, now I, what I don't know is their opponent. So it was Red and Brent playing on the same side versus, was it Mike and Brian? I think so. I, I don't, yeah, I think so. <laughs> and um, so, okay, this goes back to, I, I have to tell the whole story because there was a revenge plot in motion, but it goes back to Kerensky Khan. Which was a uh, for the, the the high backers of our mercenaries Kickstarter. So we, if one of the special guests we had there was Jordan Weissman, who was a, an amazing person. At one point, Brent and was it Red? Jordan was talking with Brent and Mike Stackpole. And uh, for those of you who don't know, um, Randall Bills this year is going on what he's calling his reunification tour, uh, his 40th anniversary tour. If you find Randall at your game store or at a con and you shake his hand, he will give you. And only if you shake his hand, you have to be there in person. He will give you a limited edition 40th anniversary Battletech patch. So Jordan was talking to these two, and he said, well, um, how do I get a patch like that? In answer, Brent just reached out, because Mike had his on his arm, and ripped the patch off and gave it to Jordan. <laughs> and Mike's like, of course, Mike's a pro. He's not going to say anything. But at that moment, revenge was hatched. <laughs> so that's the lead up. So those two are playing, and it's Mike and Brent on the other side. And I don't know if Mike said it beforehand or during the game, but he convinced, and it wasn't even that expensive, he convinced Red to turn on Brent. <clears throat> and at the most inopportune time, when literally Red, I know, was behind Brent's mech, he had Brent go out in front to like either scout or lead the charge. And then he has, he said, Brent, I need you to stand up. I need you to shake your hand. I, I really wish I could have seen this. I wish we had a video. We do have video of I it have, somewhere. I have video of it. I'm pretty sure I have video. So he's, and Brent's like confused, like what's going on? And Red reaches out, shakes his hand and says, I've been bought. And apparently the look on Brent's face was unreal. Just slack chawed, stunned. And immediately after Red opened fire on his back. So, yes, yes, the great Brent betrayal happened at Adepticon. It will be talked about for years. So for, It was epic. For those of you who haven't seen uh, the streams, you can check them out. They are under our live feed uh, here on YouTube, or um, I will be getting an editor to split them up so that they'll post separately so you don't have to search through hours and hours and hours of stuff for, this, for what you want to see. Um, but I will be watching... The Great Betrayal. I feel like I feel like Stackpole needs to write this now. Like, it's it's canon. It has to be canon well, now. Either so, Brent's been talking about doing some writing. I think he might want to should write it up. Ooh. But either one, either one. Now I, I've been trying to get you know Brent's great revenge later on. It's like, well, you need to have Red on your side again so you can betray him. But it's like, nope, nope, he's dead to me now. So high jinks and fun was had by all. That was just, and that was one of the high points awesome. uh, of the. The entire con it was it was amazing that's so, so that's so great cool i have i've stopped saying amazing it was incredible and I, I have to watch that stream too because i have to see the look right when when red broke brent's heart <laughs> i i feel like we'll make it into a clip and we'll zoom oh. real real close in on brent's face you know <laughs> yeah yep, yep, exactly <laughs> it'll be like that simpsons like look right, right there right there that's when you broke his heart yeah like, <laughs> awesome oh my god it'll be great cool that has to happen um, so yes, that was just one of many, many fun things that uh, went on during the shenanigans that is Adepticon. We we work very hard there, but we also have a lot of fun. Awesome. Um, yeah. Cool. All right. Well, uh, I'm sure we'll be sharing more stories as we think of them. But I want to talk about fiction, John. Yes, let's talk about fiction. All that right. Is, that is what I'm supposed to do. So it is what I do. Let's let's split it up into our 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 lines. Um, so let's start with BattleTech. 
So what has sure. dropped already this year that people should check out uh, before we get into what's what the future holds? Oh, golly. Okay, uh, so what's dropped this year so far? Uh, I, this may be out of order, but so far in Battletech, we did um, Grey Death Rising, which is the collection of the three Grey Death Legion stories, which includes the new 40,000-word uh, novel. <laughs> Excuse me. By Jason Schmetzer. Um, very excited about that, which relaunches the Great Death Legion in the Ill Clan era. And uh, Jason, of course, is one of our top writers, and those stories are just a great continuation of the GDL tradition. And I think he's done a great job of making the unit new again. Cool. So, uh, and then last month was we did the quest for Jardine, mm -hmm. which is her BS's kind of. The opening of the Jihad, and for those who watch the streams, uh, I mentioned a couple times that we are going to be launching Jihad Fiction, which a lot of people seem to be very excited about, so that makes me happy. So uh, Herb's book is a great jumping off point for that. Um, he, he kind of, it's a lost planet, it's intrigue, it's and of course mechs, but uh, it's a great, great kind of also a trilogy of stories that kind of take you up to the beginning of the Jihad, so it's th both those well worth uh getting and reading i i love so michael sierra vela one of our other writers uh mm -hmm. hosted at kretzky con and his quote that he kept repeating over and over again was uh it this is a wonderful thing um <laughs> so we started teasing him and then there's actually a chapter in the quest for jardine that starts off with this is a wonderful thing and one of the kappas yeah. found it and and posted it to the discord i i love that that the, the homework that, that our fans put in. Yes, uh, as for, uh, just to talk really quickly on the Fortunes of War novella series, we did release, I think it was back in February, uh, uh, novella two, Blood Rage by Craig Reed, which is the Hansen's Rough Riders going completely mercilessly crazy on the Torian Concordant uh, in revenge for the massacre that happened a couple years earlier. So that is a dark, bloody, very well-written novella that you awesome. should check out as well. Awesome. That's, a, that's an ebook only. Those five will be collected later this year. Um, I'm just scrolling through the online store because that's how sometimes I find out that this stuff is dropped. Mm -hmm. We've got mm -hmm. some um, novellas as well. We've got If Old Acquaintance Be Forgot and Giving Up the Ghosts. Was that this year? Oh, yes. Giving Up. Well, I think it was. Those may have been December. Okay. That is Fortunes of War 1, Giving Up the Ghost by Brian Young. Oh, you know what? I'm glad you reminded me. So If Old Acquaintance Be Forgot is the serial novel that we did in issues uh one two three and five of shrapnel Ooh. and michael stackpole but we also collected all four of those short novels into a massive massive tome and re-put out kelhound's ascendant um it is huge One hundred and sixty thousand words of kelhound goodness it tells the true story well through his fiction the real story of the founding of the kelhounds it is an amazing read uh, Michael signed a lot of those. We sold a ton of them at Adepticon. It's just fantastic. That brings that first epic kind of uh, tale to a close with part four. Awesome. And, uh, it was great to work with Michael on that. Cool. And then mm -hmm. uh, just about uh, 11 days ago now, gosh, time is weird. Um, mm -hmm. Shrapnel issue 16 came out. Oh my goodness. How could I forget about that? Yes. Has it been 11 days already? Yeah. Oh, I think it's been a time warp, Brem. Yep. Yes, I don't. Uh, Shrapnel sixteen. I should go. It, um, just dropped. I I feel like I feel like I just need to walk around with the gif of Robin Williams from Jumanji. That's like, what year is it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um. Of course, Phil and crew did an amazing job. This one with some spectacular uh, Fox Patrol artwork contains the fourth part of Lone Wolf and Fox Brian Young serial, which was awesome. Uh, messing. I should say messing around. Um. Fooling around in the Alira uh, uh, Mercantile uh, League. That's the name of it, which we haven't done a lot with fiction in, and I'm hoping I get some more stories set in there. I think it's a fascinating backdrop. So that saw uh, a blank in Katie, Katie Ferraro and her crew uh, kind of signing out with a larger force, uh, the Lone Wolves, and that has benefits and that can have disadvantages. So <clears throat> again, uh, and that's just one of many, many stories in there. The issue is on sale now in POD and ebook. Cool. Go grab it. <laughs> it's, many people do, and I think you should. So, so because it's incredible. We've already talked for a while about Battletech fiction for the new year. It's it's the end of March now. What's coming for Battletech fiction? Plenty. Huh? Plenty. So next, 
Uh, in May, we've talked about it on May 15th, is uh, Brian Young's Without Question. This is a direct sequel to A Question of Survival and picks up the story of the beleaguered and besieged Jade Falcons as they weather pretty much threats from all sides. <clears throat> Those looking for a return of Jihee Chistu will be very happy because he plays a prominent role in this. Uh, we've been working with the author, Brian Young, and I understand there's a, a big Sudeten arc there, so those of you who've been following kind of that saga will get to see it from the Falcon side. Um, <clears throat> so that's May, and then coming in July, and we've talked a lot about this at Adepticon, is Trial of Birthright by Michael Ciaravella. This book is what we would technically call, quote-unquote, our spine novel for the year, because we are going back to Terra <clears throat> after three years of Real time, Hour of the Wolf was published in 2021, and now we're going back to Terra to see what's happening behind the wall. What is the Lark up to? What is everybody else up to? Uh, it's going to be incredible. I did a lot of work with Brian, uh, Brian, Michael, and Ray at the con, so the draft looks incredible, and we're just you know popping it up. Of course, everyone has comments, but uh, so far <clears throat> Michael's done an incredible job, and we look forward to making it, the book even more amazing. That's going to be available in July. It's going to be our big Gen Con release. Um, we'll be picking that up. Michael, of course, will be at Gen Con. We'll hope to do some signings with him and Michael Stackpole and Brian and other writers, but uh -huh. I'm very excited about that one coming out. Then in November, it, it seems to be the year for sequels. It's um, Bill Lee's Letter of the Law, which is his direct sequel to Hunting Season. We go back to the Free Worlds League. Um, uh, so, and, and uh, I'm sorry, I'm remiss. I forgot. I'm trying to get the final touches on it. In the next coming weeks, uh, we're doing another Dark Age novel in the Shadow of the Dragon by Craig Reed. Craig, sorry about that. I, I slipped up. I should have let off with you. That's going to be coming out very soon, either uh, this month, probably early, early April. Uh, so that's where we are there. Cool. So lots of Battletech goodness. Of course, again, we're finishing up Fortunes of War. We're getting those, those novellas out. I wanted to get the collection out by Gen Con. I don't know if it's going to be able to. We're doing our best. We're moving forward as quickly as we can on those. So that's what I can tell you there. Awesome. Whew. It's a lot. Oh, and I just remembered, speaking of, hey, we also did this at Adepticon. We also had a one-hour panel with Ray, myself, uh, Michael Ciaravella, Brian Young, and Michael Stackpole about officially announcing the battle. Uh, well, it's an update because we uh, announced at the Kickstarter about the Battletech graphic novels. We had an hour-long panel where we talked about the progress we've been making on the graphic novels. Cool. It's, it's awesome. going to be unreal. Uh Michael Stackpole and Brian Young, both who have worked extensively in the comics field, are heading up the team. Ray and I, of course, are doing our stuff as editorial and line developer. And I think we've got a team that we're going to tell just an incredible graphic novel story in the Battletech universe. It is my sincere hope this kicks off, ideally, a line of, uh, <clears throat> whether it's adaptations, new stories, or both, a line of more graphic novels, both uh, in Battletech successful I can't promise anything, but I'm really hoping we can move to Shadowrun in due time as well. Cool. There's just so many stories out there. The graphic novel format brings a new audience yeah. in and also is a great way to revisit or create new stories in a new format. So I'm extremely excited about it. And uh, it was great to sit down with those guys and talk about how we plan on doing it, You know what, what the plan is, and, and answer questions from the fans. That's awesome. Um yeah, there, there's just there's so much happening, and and before mm. before I switch over to <laughs> Shadowrun news, then, um, what about audio for BattleTech? Uh, yes, yeah, so the fans, the audio fans, were very um, vocal in their questions. I got asked that at least once per panel. Audio had so, a little bit of hiccups on the BattleTech side, but we have ironed those out, and things are moving forward. Close quarters is in the can. I just need to coordinate with our great uh, BattleTech Kickstarter release crew to get that out to the backers first because it was promised to them. And then it'll it'll go wide just as soon as I can get that straightened out. And then we have a whole host of things. Um, Got to get out rocking a hard place. Uh, I think we did Phil's The Anvil or no, it's Winter of Hope. Winter of Hope and The Anvil's got to get There's lots to come. There's lots to come. Uh, our folks at Backers Everywhere are working very hard on it. They have a lot of material in the pipe and we're going to get it out as soon as they finish it and wrap it up. So that's where we are. It's, I Really plan on getting caught up with audio uh, this year. Cool. Awesome. All right. Oh. Let's switch on over to Shadowrun. What has released up to this point this year? So Shadowrun's... Uh, Shadowrun, we had, as I well, mentioned to you earlier, we did, uh, with Jen Brozak, we did um, Shadowrun, the Mosaic Run auditions, which is her four 
YA novellas wrapped into a single volume. It allows me to get it in POD so people can get it in print. It also has interstitial material from Blotter Babe, her mysterious fixer character. A huge surprise about that, which I'm not going to spoil. So <clears throat> it turns out those four novellas are connected in a way that none of those runners could possibly have fathomed. Ooh. It's it's a great collection. It's available again in ebook and POD, and it leads into Jen's Shadow Run, the Mosaic Run novel, which I, I said the draft is done. We uh, should have that out by Gen Con if all goes well. Okay. And I'm looking forward to that. But then next on the list is a really, really interesting novel by Russell Zimmerman called Dark Synergy. And the reason this is interesting because Rusty goes all out into the life of a corp person, you know, mm. corporate, um, sorority man, whatever you want to call him. And I had a chance to, I, I got the manuscript. I haven't had a chance to really dive into it yet, but a portion of that is going to appear in the next source book, which is Smooth Operations, I think. I believe that's the one. I'm not sure. Jason and Hardy, if he could, if he's in chat listening, he could say that. I think that's the one. And they said, hey, we could use something for fiction. And this book actually lent itself perfectly. We grabbed a great excerpt from it, and it's an incredible book. It's it's still all the shadow running goodness you expect, but from a different perspective. Neat. And that's what I love about this. That's what I love about Rusty's writing, of course, is always so smooth. And seeing it from inside the corp just gives it this whole new uh, viewpoint that I think people are going to enjoy, cool. but also kind of taken by surprise. So I'm very excited about that one coming out. Yeah, I got to talk to Rusty a little bit um, and and hear a little bit about <laughs> the story and, and the perspective of someone that really believes that their company's doing the right thing. <laughs> mm. It's um, an interesting viewpoint. <laughs> He nailed it, the whole working for a boss you hate, but but knowing that you think the corp is doing the right thing. And yeah, it's that the dichotomy of the character is fascinating. Uh, and I can't wait for that book to come out and see what the view what the readers think. I almost almost forgot we also are doing a, a shorter novel called Base Crackers by Aaron Rosenberg. Ooh. His standalone follow-up, he did uh, Shadow Dance earlier a couple of years ago. And this one ties slightly into the, the whole Dizian meta plot where a group of runners go are tasked with cracking an abandoned base and looting something in there. And of course, they find more than they ever bargained for down in, I think it's the jungle of South America. That one should Ooh. be coming out next month. Cool. So, uh, and then let's see, down the road, of course, I talked about um, uh, Mosaic Run, which is Jen's novel, which I'm very excited about as our Gen Con Shadow Run release. Um, and then in the latter half of the year, oh, and of course, <clears throat> we're working on wrapping up, for those who are wondering of the Shadow Run uh, Kickstarter, we're working on wrapping up Magic. Machines and Mayhem, that anthology it has some great fiction in there from Rusty, Brian Young, and some new voices, Alina Pete, Crystal Frazier. Um, Jen Brozek is actually assisting me on that one. She's actually the lead, she's the lead editor on that one. So actually, I'm just coming in behind her. And awesome. I've been reading the stories. The stories are incredible. Should have that one available in POD awesome. at Gen Con. But we had to wrap it up, get it over to the uh the uh, backers, and and that's that's where we are for Shadowrun. And also very excited. Cool. Um, dare I ask about Shadowrun Audio? I don't know, Rem, dare you? <laughs> <laughs> that one has also had some ups and downs, I'm going to say, but uh, working with the great team over at, at Rem Alternus there, we are we are getting that back on track. I know, who, me? <laughs> uh, her great people and the narrators are just incredible. And uh, uh, wait, off the record, we still have to fix nothing personal. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, Amazon is fun. Yes, yes. Uh, you and Dak sometimes can share commiserations over drinks, whether whether it's print or audio. I mean, I guess they have to be nitpicky, but sometimes it's you guys are being way too nitpicky, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. So we look forward to getting Shadow on Audio back on track. I know a lot of people are clamoring for that as well, and I want to give that to you folks in as many ways as you want to consume it. That's Yay. always been a big thing for me. Exactly. Awesome. 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 Cool. All right. So uh, the next line, John, Leviathans. Yes. Uh, we had a great, actually, we had Leviathans demos going on there, uh, which was great. A guy was in a big officer's brought coat. He had the hat and everything. It looked really cool. It was a huge table. Uh, so this is very interesting because uh, people do ask me about Leviathans fiction. Uh, I'm pleased to say that Bill Keith, who's doing the trilogy, has turned in his first draft of book one, which I am over the moon about. I couldn't be more excited. Uh, Bill, of course, a long time Battletech author and science fiction author, but he loves writing 
team and Diesel Punk. So when I was able to get him for this trilogy, it was a match made in heaven for both of us. I love working with Bill. He's so imaginative, but also so rigorous in his scientific approach to things. Can't wait to see. You know, he and I and Brent have been talking about the plot, and there's you know images. I can't wait to see what he's done with all this. Uh, you can find his work, if you wanted to start reading some of it, Rendezvous in Rio is the novella that's out right now. That's mm -hmm. available. Uh, shenanigans in South America, and it's just delightful. Awesome. So I'll run to the other fiction, and then I'm going to go to, because I, I saw... Um, uh, in not Tanton, Tannen? One of the other, one of the commenters already commented about fiction, but we'll get to that in a second. Yeah, Michael Ciaravella, who I, I've loaded up with Battletech and Shadowrun right now, also has a Shadow, uh, Leviathan's novel due, which I need to schedule him so he can get working on it. Uh, Mike Stackpole has done a short story for us, which has been edited. I need to send it to Mike for his review. We should be able to get that out to the backers fairly soon. And then we have a novella by Mike Ritchie, which is in author review because it needed a little bit of expansion. And I'm still waiting on that, Mike. So you have to go, go kind of tap Mike. But Mike was at PAX East this past weekend, so he's been kind of busy and out of town. And once he gets back, I'll have him wrap that up so we can get those out. Now, awesome. the interesting thing, uh, I was on a panel, I think it was the fiction panel, and Harvin, that, that's the, the person's name, asked me about, hey, there's a bunch of fiction at the Monsters in the Sky website. Is any of that ever going to come out in an ebook or OD? And I'm like, there is because I, I didn't know. So I have to go dig that out. And yes, I would love to put out a companion volume to Armored Skies. Um, and yeah, if there's fiction out there that hasn't been collected, then you're darn right I'm going to put it out there. So I have to go digging or find someone who can get me that information because, yeah, I should be publishing that. And awesome. uh, I would love to. So the Bison stuff is forthcoming. Stay tuned here. Uh, Rem and myself and, and Brandon, all those folks, will give you more information as that develops. Cool. Now, um, as we start to wrap into questions here, um, I know I, 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 I'm, I'm going to be subtle here and then you can come in like and throw a brick through the window if you want to. But um, we have maybe some different fiction coming up in a new line or several lines. Anything we're able to talk about yet? Different fiction. I already talked about the graphic novel. Should, I, I'm going to send you a Discord message, John. Okay. <laughs> Shh, we're, we're being I'm, sneaky here. Yeah, just we, some things we can't talk about yet because it's not quite. Here we go. Not quite. Oops, that's not it. Hold on. There. Da, da, da. Uh, 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 I don't think we can mention that okay. yet because. Okay, I have no information on this in my department. Let's put it that way. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but think... we we do have the new lines for Voltron and uh, I mean Kung Fu Panda. Kung Fu Panda, yes. yes. Uh, what what's is that going to be fiction or are we <sighs> doing board game and RPG and stuff only? So we did not get fiction, which I must admit kind of made my heart sink a little bit Aww. because especially with Kung Fu Panda four coming out, that's a natural kind of progression. But it is only for RPG and uh, board game. Uh, which actually, I mean, both those sound fantastic for RPG and board game. So I think they're going to do just fine. It would have been nice, but when you're dealing with a, a company like NBC Universal, there's only so much you can really ask for. Sure. Um, and hopefully down the road, if they like us, we are, we are developing a relationship with them. And so far, it's been great. Good. And ideally, I would love to open up the uh, the talks later on to like, hey, maybe we could do something with this as we keep going. So no plans now, but stay tuned. Believe me, I would be shouting that to the rooftops from the rooftops if it ever were to happen. Cool. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. All right. So I think, uh, is there anything else you'd like to share fiction wise? Anything I missed that you want to talk about before we move to Q and a, I think we covered it all. Nothing leaping to mind. Folks go, uh, just go check out those streams, uh, with Mike Stackpole, Michael Sierra Vela, uh, those were great and ask some in-depth questions about uh, writing. Uh, if you want to know more about writing battles, like writing Shadowrun, they were great um, uh, panels. So I just want to I just want to plug that myself. So no, we can we can move right to questions. Okay, um, and I will say too, um, I don't have the link on hand right now. I'll have to dig it up for the um, description later. But uh, there is a link where you could uh, submit. It gives you instructions on how to submit writing for Shrapnel. Um, yes. Which is yeah. the the how do you, how do you describe shrap, shrapnel? What are the words you use? I mean, honestly, shrapnel is the launch portal. If someone's serious about writing in Battletech, the Shrapnel Magazine is the best way to get your start. 
Uh, it's managed by Phil Lee. Uh, I oversee him, and Phil does a phenomenal job. <clears throat> He's uh, able to take you on the, kind of the journey from you know submitting and, and not maybe knowing what you're doing or, or trying the best you can to his editorial advice is always clear and concise and, and to the point to help you improve your fiction. You know, and the one thing I would say, if you submit to Shrapnel and your first story doesn't get picked up, don't get discouraged. Many, 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 many writers have had to try more than once um, to get into Battletech. It, it doesn't happen first shot, or it very rarely happens with your first shot. So the thing is to keep trying, is to don't get discouraged. Um, and, and just Shrapnel is a great resource, and you should also be reading it. To get an idea of, of the stories that, uh, to be honest, Phil wants to see in, in, in his um, his issues. So that's important too. Don't just be writing; be reading too. Cool. So, yeah. All right. Let's get to questions. Um, from James Sutton, John, when is the TRO Ill Clan uh, Volume Two going to be released? So we had copies of Volume Two at at Epticon. I almost blanked out and said Gen Con. It hasn't even happened yet. Adepticon. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of knowledge about when um, source book material comes out. That's more of a Ray or Aaron question. So I'm going to punt that one. Sorry. The book I looks fantastic. I can tell you that much. And I want to say it should be soon, but I can't remember if we actually flew those copies in or what. Yeah, my, that's so. my guess. But um, Ray usually watches these, so I'm sure there will be a, a comment uh, that pops up from him explaining um, where it is. Right. Um. Spectre asks, are the results of the events from Adepticon posted anywhere? Um, I think that would probably be a demo team question um, that I can absolutely pass to them. Uh, I don't know that, unless you've heard something, John. No. <laughs> no, I have not. Okay. <laughs> mm. um, you guys are getting so, such detailed questions. We're like, um, we need a specialist. Well, yeah. <laughs> Uh, from Prussian Havoc, uh, Michael Sierravella was a magnificent Adepticon live stream, stream MC. Will Michael reply, reprise this role for Gen Con? Um, he and I will be switching. Um, we might, we've even had like Brian Young has offered to host some and, and things like that. So, you know, maybe I can actually see Gen Con this year and leave the booth. Um, <laughs> so yes, he is going to be around. Uh, Adepticon, since I wasn't there, I put him in charge of the streaming entirely. Uh, for Gen Con is the next one we're going to stream at. And then the last one we're going to stream at from the booth is PAX Unplugged. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm not sure yet if he'll be at that one, um, but mm -hmm. I will be. And um, and Gen Con will both be there. So I'm going, I'm absolutely happy to share the love. Talvin asks, and now that you have access to the old Leviathan's website fiction, would you consider taking... The race to the pull articles and making them a framing story for an anthology is that what we were talking about with pretty much i i have to review it i i haven't even laid eyes on this yet so once i see what's there then i can figure out how best to use it uh that, that's very possible that would be kind of cool i always like to include new material whenever i can and if that works as a frame story why not cool awesome uh, then we've got from the old Dragoon. Any word on Shadowrun's second edition core coming to PDF? Uh, uh, that is being worked on as we speak. It's, I know it's far along. I don't know exactly how far along, but I here's the thing. Being made. Like we want to. I'm 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 going to clarify because I'm also I, I go to those meetings. Um, we want to. We're verifying the realisticness of doing that because literally we had for the first edition we don't have those files like for everything oh. fasa we don't have so it had to be scanned in page by page and then mm -hmm. spruced up by the artists and stuff like it was lovingly a nightmare <laughs> Um, so I, I'm not sure yet. I think it's going to depend on first edition sales for the, the reproduction to see if like, is this something worth investing that much time into? Is this what the fan base wants? So, um, undecided we want to, but we don't know. Okay. And Rim is obviously more up to date on that than I am. So take her answer. That is the reality of the situation. Yeah, it was, it was rough. Um, <laughs> I know first edition was a challenge and I'm going to be nice when I say that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but thanks for that question. Uh, Prussian Havoc, uh, how close are we to an Armored Skies 2? 
but I think this was a little bit. I, I, I don't know, Prussian, if you came in earlier, uh, I was just talking about that with Tarvin, that apparently there's a trove of, of fiction that needs to be kind of taken from Monsters in the Sky and reworked into another anthology. Um, I will say as much, and I love our merch guys, this one probably won't have quite the big names because those big names also came with hefty price tags. They were they were worth every penny. Don't get me wrong, but just holy crap, we spent a lot of that one. Uh, and and I've been getting people wanting to write for Leviathan. So if I can get this across the uh, the finish line, then I can give some of those people a, a chance to actually do it. So cool. There we go. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Another question from Prussian Havoc. Um, the shrapnel submission queue expected response time has improved by approximately a hundred days in the past week. Can we expect even better responsiveness in the future? I'm going to say tentatively yes. That was a that was one of the other comments that came up during the streams. Uh, Phil Lee was at Adepticon, so we had a couple conversations about getting that kind of under control. Uh, again, we don't feel people should be waiting that long for a response to their stories. So steps are being taken to streamline and improve communication both ways. So uh, I'm going to say that that you should start seeing things moving much more quickly in the months ahead and, cool. and staying that way. It's important that we don't leave people <clears throat> kind of languishing uh, on that front. Awesome. Uh, Takeo Kurita asks, uh, is there some first picture of the graphic novel that can be shared? Not yet. Um, we're still we're still very much it's we're moving it's past the planning stage. I will tell you that. But we don't have any images. Oh, the other thing I, we announced on the stream is that Eldon Cowger, who's done some amazing cover art, is going to be the artist for all four issues. Ooh. We wanted to keep it the same artist, so we have a uniform look throughout. Eldon, bless the man, has um, bravely volunteered. But I, I he's one of my favorite artists in uh, Brent's Pantheon. I can't wait to see what he does with this and the stories that are going to be created. Mm-hmm. Right now, we don't, we don't have any images. Stay tuned. As soon as we get, ideally, even maybe a cover or a page, I would I would love to show that off. Awesome. <clears throat> All right. Uh, yeah, and I, I know, too, because I've I've worked on comic book production, too. Usually, they have to be written before they the art, the artist even gets. Yes, yeah, story has to be in place, storyboarded, and then the artist is, is turned loose. Yeah. And I think with Eldon and his familiarity with Battletech, it's going to be amazing. It's just going to be amazing. And yes, I brought, I brought up the amazing again because I think it is going to be amazing. So that's, that's why I'm using it. Michael Sierra Vela says, it's a wonderful thing. You say amazing. <laughs> it's we're, we're getting Apparently. all of our, our, our isms out this week. Yep. 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 Uh, let's see here. Ed M asks, I submitted a shrapnel story and I haven't heard back yet. Can I submit a second story while I wait? Uh, no, I'm afraid not, Ed. It is one per. So, but again, if you just heard a couple minutes ago that we're working on streamlining and speeding, speeding, speeding up, speeding up the response time. I edit good. Uh, speeding up the response time for the queue. And hopefully you will hear an answer one way or the other. Uh, hopefully it'll be a yes. Um, if not, though, but take whatever notes Phil gives you and and, and go forward. But uh, unfortunately, we, we only take one submission at a time. Or just like, Fortunately for us, otherwise, I think we'd probably be inundated even more so than we already are. So we had to put a limit on it. We had to put a cap on it. And that was the cap we came up with. Cool. <clears throat> Pokefan548 asks, how goes progress on the Wars of Reaving trilogy? Well, very well. Uh, the first book by Craig Reed, from what I understand, is is almost done. I had to pull Craig off of that for Shadow in the Shadow of the Dragon, which he's wrapping up too. So he's got two big books. And then Jason Hansa. Excuse me. Jason Hansa and Phil Lee are, are working diligently on theirs. So that trilogy is well along. Um, I, again, very, very excited about returning to the homelands. We did, uh, Re- Randy? Ru- Randall. I don't know why, where Randy came from. Let's start calling him Randy now. Ross- <laughs> Randall Bills. Did, she, uh, did that I'm just getting, happen live on I the am internet? Getting punchy. Yeah, I'm getting way punchy. <laughs> Randall's Founding of the Clans trilogy, uh, which was a part of the last uh, Kickstarter, it was released to such a claim, even after we gave away the books, that um, I'm so happy to return to the homelands. I think there's so many stories there that haven't been told. And to do the Wars of Reaving with these gentlemen, it's going to be awesome. Cool. Um, I I propose the change of C-bills to R-bills, and they are Randy bills. <laughs> Randy bills, yes. Yeah, well, the C-foxes might have something to say about that. So. <laughs> 
Oh my god. <clears throat> Randy Billy. Thanks, Pokey fan. That's funny. Let <laughs> uh, me take my water. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Kara Mindy, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Uh, has there been progress on getting the stories by Michael Stackpole from the Hairbrain Schemes Kickstarter collected? I'm going to say cautiously yes. I actually talked to Jordan about that uh, while he was at KrenskyCon, and we believe we have a way forward. Um, after I've I've read the entries only. I've never read the stories myself because I didn't back the Kickstarter. Silly me. So I've seen the entries and they sound really intriguing. Michael and I want them out. I want them out. So we're working on it and actually we're closer than we've ever been before. So right now it's, it's very close. If I can get them out this year, I certainly will. Awesome. From Big Red 40 Tech, not a question, but just wanted to say thank you to Rem, Michael C., and everyone else who made KCON and Adepticon happen. It was incredible. Like the list of people to Aww. thank for that, like, Michael <laughs> did so much planning for the hotel, for the location, for um well, for the, yeah. the schedule. Uh we've had uh um James Topa helped with the schedule as well and getting uh, demo agents. The demo agents that were there were freaking phenomenal. Um and then with Adepticon, that's always a uh a race to the finish line. So so many people uh brought that together and and very grateful for all of them. Um so thanks. And thank you, Big Red. Thank you for being there because it was cool having uh, you as a special guest and getting to know you better and your terrible taste in food. And uh, yeah, so great, great uh, getting to know you. Yes, uh, Big Red. I, I, don't, I don't remember the last time I've laughed so much uh, and talked so much battle tech, just lore. He's just It's a deep dive every time. And we were just dying every time we talked to him. It's a, a funny, funny man. Awesome. And uh, wow. Um, I'm going to, uh, uh, are we, I want to tease something at the end of the stream. Oh, okay. But, but, but wait to the end. Wait to the end. I'll I, save I'm five just, minutes for you. I am just, I'm looking at something over here and it is truly, truly something. Yeah. But, but I can't reveal it. I'm just going to tease it. It's for, it's one of our April Fool's things. There you go. Okay. Okay. But let's continue. Let's continue with the questions. Okay. Now I want to know. <laughs> 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 on behalf of everyone watching this what <laughs> um all right lorkin nagel asks as the person who came up with the legacy 2 this time it's a warship idea and waiting on feedback on shrapnel fiction how do i make sure i'm on that book um well first of all obviously the the key is to get the shrapnel fiction a uh, submission feedback and see where you are on that uh i oh boy <sighs> You've given me a terrible idea, and I'm not sure I want to do it. And that would be doing an open call, but I think we would just be buried. So, Battletech anthologies are invite only. Um, and th that's the issue with someone coming up with an idea that is a good one that's outside of CGL. Um, that a person doesn't honestly have any real claim to that because I, I would like to have you on, if possible, yes, but there's about probably about 100 other authors who would love to be in on that too. So the answer, the short answer is it depends. Let's hopefully get your um, your battle text or your shrapnel submission uh, reviewed and have an answer from that, and then uh, hopefully Phil will let me know what's going on there. Cool. Okay. From Archangel Lord, um, what books has Randy Bills written, and what are future fiction uh, that uh, Randy Bills will be working on? I love I love the continuation. This is a thing. He's gonna hate us, John. Oh. He, like he doesn't hate me already. <laughs> I, have, I have done yes. So that Randy Bills. Oh my god. So we talked about that at Adepticon because Randy Bills does owe me a Nova Cat novel right now. He has been contracted for it, and I made sure that people asked him on stream, "Hey, when's that book coming out?" Um, obviously, the Mercenaries Kickstarter, uh, which was a success beyond any of our wildest dreams. Absolutely, any of us. But then, of course, sucked all the air out of the galaxy. Not the room, the galaxy. Yeah. So the good news is most things are, I think actually all, no, no, all things are done, including Art of Food and Art of War, the cookbook and the, the Jamie Wolf uh, Art of War edit, and annotated volume. They are in various stages of shipping, printing, manufacturing to finish up. Um, our parts are done, and it's now just getting everything together, getting it to the warehouse, burying our warehouse in mercenaries package, and getting stuff out to you, the backers. Mm-hmm. Once that is done, 
and and Randy gets like a week or two to maybe recuperate. <laughs> One of the things I want him to tackle is the rest of his book. Cool. Uh, I know that there are a lot of fans who are interested. In, I'm just going to say Randy the rest of the stream just because. Yep. Um, interested in in Randy's uh, work and and I am too. I love his work. I think the take he has on the Nova Cats is just so special and, and really unique. And there are very few people who can do them justice like he can. So awesome. yeah, I want to see more too. And you guys do, do too. So whenever he's on a stream or an AMA or or just walk up to him and get your patch and then say, thanks. Now where's my Nova Cat novel? <laughs> so yeah, do that, do that at a convention. Absolutely. Awesome. Yep. Because that shows how much you fans want it. And cool. that just, I think, will drive him even more. I mean, he loves to write and he doesn't get enough time to. But if he knows you folks are clamoring for it, he will, he will, we will figure out how to give him the time to do that. All right. Two more questions, and then we'll cut it off so you can do your your tease. Yeah, my, my very light tease, yes. Um, so the Old Dragoon asks, who and what can we expect at ChupacabraCon in Texas? Um, so ChupacabraCon is, ooh, May 16th, 17th? It starts around uh, you then. Would, you would know more than I would. I, I've looked at so many dates in the past. <laughs> yeah, everything. Uh, I just got back, guys, from traveling for six weeks straight. Uh, last night. So uh, similar to John, I am masking high right now because I have no energy. <laughs> um, but ah. now that I'm back, I'm planning for the next six weeks I'm going to be gone, uh, which <laughs> starts tough. with ChupacabraCon in Texas in Austin or near Austin, San Marcos. Um, mm -hmm. So I will be there. Phil uh, will be there. So if you want to talk about shrapnel um, and Russell oh, Phil's coming. That's great. Yeah. All right. And Russell <clears throat> cool. Simmons going to be there. Um, yeah. John, uh, I'm just saying, uh, I have an extra badge if you want to come oh. hang out. I <clears throat> I am... Uh, May? May. May. Texas. Is it, uh, you know what? I'll think about it. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, we'll be there. We're doing kind of an alternate of Masters of Minions thing. Um, there's going to be lots of games. I'm going as a special guest, so I'll be talking about pr crowdfunding and marketing on some panels. Um, I'm also going to see if I can sneak in maybe like a celeb shadow run game or something like that, if I can pull that off. Ooh, so, fun. Um, so I'll, I'll GM a session or two. Um, so I'm really excited for it. We're going to have a demo room and outside of the demo room is going to be a small, um, booth. So, uh, we can't bring a ton of stuff, but we're going to bring what we can, um, We'll definitely, uh, uh, anything that's new from like the 40th anniversary box sets, if they're in stock by then, um, I'll, I'll send whatever I can. So, um, so check it out. The focus of, of the con for us is going to be Battletech, which is why I was like, okay, I'll do sh a Shattering game separately. But, uh, most of the con is, uh, and our presence will be Battletech. Um, and then the last question Karamindi, is the PPC drink and drink recipe and instructions in the cookbook? Yes. All of them. Approach with, all I'm going to tell you is approach with caution. But Excellent. Yes. And if you're really crazy, there's something called the, oh, what the heck is it called? Not the, it's not the PPC, but it's the, 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 the weapons check. The weapons check, which is, I think, almost equal or even worse than the PPC. But you'll find out about that in the, in the cookbook when awesome. it's out. So, yeah. I, I see a, a, a correction from Rusty. So um, we'll have Alpha Strike demos and Alpha Strike main event, uh, CBT um, grinders going most of the time, and a Champions and Chupacabras Alpha Strike fight versus Rem, Phil, and I. Um, so that that's that's the plan. I really like gu grinders, guys, and I get <laughs> I get like I I will swear at you like. <laughs> She gets. I've, I've seen this. Rem gets way into it in a good way, but yeah. She's so just, she's just like, "Oh, come on!" A little fist of fury there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, it's so fun I to watch. I will probably do um, several several grinders uh, because I just think it's really fun and I get very competitive, which in a fun way. Like, come at me, it's fine, but also I'll destroy your day. So like that's. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> mm. so that's the plan uh for chupa um we have four minutes left john okay so obviously it's here it's the end of march and as everyone knows they expect something to come out from um for april fools which people are hard at work on here and this year i decided i wanted to get fiction in on the game too so i'm not gonna say anything more but on april fools you folks will see some things from the fiction department and i 
and I'll wait. Um, that, that's all. Just looking for it. And and who knows? If people like things enough, they might actually happen. But I'm going to say no more for now. My lips are sealed. Only in a couple of days anyways. So you don't have long to wait. Yeah, it's Sunday. But, uh, it's April 1st. So uh-huh, um, uh-huh. maybe, I don't know, maybe your marketing person should know what those April Fool's things are so we can post about them. <laughs> yes. Actually, it's one thing I do need to talk with you about this week. Love so, you, John. Uh, <laughs> love you too, Rem. Yes, it is one thing I wanted to plan so we can get that out to everyone far and wide so they can see the greatness that is uh, what we're doing. So yeah, absolutely. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, we have three minutes left still for that that very slight tease announcement. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I guess we could do a couple last minute questions. Let's or... go. Let's go to last minute questions. Right. Let's go back to the questions. Uh, don't worry about Which it. Have been great, uh, by the way, folks. Yeah, don't worry about a shock. I'll I'll just take over the chat from here. Ed <laughs> M, what are the chances of Lauren finishing Shadows of Faith as part of this jihad fiction plan? I would really love for that to happen. He had been making progress on it, and then it kind of got stalled out uh, just because it did. And the real question is, is he interested in picking it back up? So right now, that's a qualified, I can't answer the question because I don't know. So that's where we are. I, it is it is one of my great unfinished projects. I'm not sure it's ever going to be finished. We're, we're going to get Den of Wolves out before that one. I can do that for sure. Um, <clears throat> so qualified, maybe. Cool. The future is unsure. Excuse me. Uh, Maurice yeah. asks, uh, hey, Rem, BPL versus CGL uh, grinder, come at me. <laughs> Time and place. May something. <laughs> San Marcos, Texas. <laughs> I'm for it. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, for John from Talvin, check your Discord DMs and notifications for the Lev's fiction you haven't laid eyes on. Oh, yes. I did see that link. I'm actually going to go follow that up probably after this call. Cool. So, there we go. After the stream. And thank you for that, by the way. <clears throat> um, John, if you had to give three words to define the theme of the Oakland era, what would they be? Oh, let's see. Well, it, to me, this is just to me, Ray probably has, and every author probably has a different... A different take, but I would say turmoil, splintering, and suspense. I think I think those are my three adjectives to describe it. Cool. cool there we cool. go. Yeah, that was a, that was an excellent question. By the way, I never thought of it in that way before. But to come up with that on the fly. <laughs> Cr asks: Is the Merck's Kickstarter still expected to ship in June? As of right now, yes. Um, I, I am starting to give that a very tentative yes due to the shipping state of the world. Uh, we had things that should have been at Adepticon that weren't. Um, and it's just, it's out of our control. Um, but as soon as we know, like if it's a yes or no, like I anticipate there being problems, but I don't know there's problems. Um, Uh, so uh, let me, let me jump in here real quick because my author pinged me because he heard about the stream. <clears throat> the next Fortunes of War novella is A Skulk of Foxes by Jason Hansa, Ooh. which of course deals with Clan C. Fox. And uh, the cover is fantastic. It actually has a king crab on it. And I leaped at the chance to put that on the cover by Tano Sim. It is a marvelous piece. <laughs> the story is coming out, I think, like any day now. Uh, but that's probably going to be early early April as well. But look for that shortly. That'll be an ebook. And then they'll all be collected in the Fortunes of War novella collection. So that's coming up. And then we have Geoff's. Swift, I think, and then Phil Lee are novellas four and five. So we'll have more on that a little bit later when they get a little bit closer to those release dates. Yeah. But Jason would also kill me if I did not mention him. So there we go. Cool. <laughs> and the last one I'll do is Big Red uh, says, Hey, Rem, remember this. Who did that? Who shot me? Which is you? Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I get competitive. Um, if you if you come at me, I'll, I'll spank you back down. It's It's... <laughs> Um, I actually got super excited. I got home last night and, um, John, this was a big moment. Uh, you'll understand coming from the Shadowrun side. Um, Mm -hmm. I was telling my husband all about my travels and stuff and talked about, um, Kerensky Khan and playing Battletech. And I was like, so for our date nights, we play board games on some of our date nights and fun. Yeah. And so I'm like, uh, I'm going to be teaching you Battletech. Um, so 
Neat. Yeah. That would be good. The yeah. con the con the conversion has happened. I still haven't played Alpha Strike. Uh I, I did mm. uh Aces, but I was kind of they were already halfway through the game when I joined and I was it, kind of zoned it out. It helps if you have a, uh, played Alpha Strike at least one time. And you should. We should we need to get you in an Alpha Strike uh I don't think you grind her there, but Alpha Strike game just in general. Well, I'll up. I'll have plenty of time at Chupa, mm -hmm. um, so I'll be I'll be definitely on the floor playing games with people. So I'll um, uh, I'll I'll make some time for Alpha Strike to learn that. So awesome, awesome, that's fantastic. Yeah, I the two systems are quite different. I'll look forward to hearing your uh, your thoughts on Alpha Strike. Yeah, yeah, I, I've I've got the rhythm of Classic now, uh, and since that one's so much harder, from what everyone tells me. Uh, mm. Like it's, it's more number crunching. It's it's kind of a little bit more intensive. Uh, just kind of tracking everything. But, yeah, uh, but yeah. once you get the flow of where to check for what, it's mm -hmm. it's systematic, which is which is nice. Right. So, um. So yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, but mm -hmm. it is time. So we're gonna say goodbye. Uh, but thank you all so much for joining. Don't forget to go back. Uh, Jennifer Brozek, BattleTech and Shadowrun author. Her Kickstarter, Dear Pen Pal, Belgium, nineteen eighty. On uh, Kickstarter, it is bit.ly slash dear underscore pen pal. Um, so check that out. Follow the link and uh, enjoy. And we'll see you next week here on Tuesday Newsday. Yep. Brem, thanks for having me. Of course. Chat, thanks for all the great questions. This was a pleasure. So Thank you. Bye. Right. Bye, everybody. <laughs>